So, here we are at the very end of the line. This is the last time that I'll be talking to you via video lecture, and I thought that this would be a really good opportunity to uh, give you guys sort of a tour of some books uh, that we didn't cover in great detail in this class, or maybe we touched on a little bit, or maybe we didn't mention at all, but books that are really great. And, you know, if you found anything in this class that you enjoy, uh, you know, I'm sure that you'll enjoy many of these books that I'm going to show you right now. Uh, one thing that's really awesome about these books I'm going to show you is that I know that I think pretty much every single one of them is available used on uh, Amazon for under $15, many of them under $10, uh, so you'd be able to get them uh, for very cheap, and I can tell you that they're worth it. So, uh, first book I'd like to show you is whoop, Rumi. Okay, so The Essential Rumi. Uh, this book is translated by Coleman Barks. Rumi is the uh, highest selling poet in the world. Uh, he's really sort of hilarious and irreverent. He lived many centuries ago, uh, so, but this is a new translation, so it reads as if it was written recently. Uh, Rumi's sort of a good time fella. He's really interested in, you know, uh, the truth and God and the universe, but he's also kind of uh, a rascal. A little bit at times he likes to have a glass of wine and talk about how it makes him feel you know stuff like that he's very sort of a, a fun and interesting sort of crazy uh, writer so he's he's pretty awesome uh, next thing is uh, Stardust by Frank Bedart uh, this book uh, is really really great I used to teach a class called best writing since 1990 and we would always end it uh, by studying this book uh, the last poem in it is a 40-page masterpiece. It's definitely one of the greatest pieces of literature that anybody's come up with in the last 20, 30 years. Uh, it's really extremely dynamic and complicated and interesting. And, you know, reading him will just, you know, expand your mind in profound ways. That's Frank Bedart. Uh, the next book I'd like to show you is uh, a piece of famous drama, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Albee. Uh, some of you guys might have uh, might be familiar with the movie or the play. Uh, they're both really great. The movie version actually is starting uh, Liz Taylor, and it is the only movie in history to be nominated for an Academy Award in every single category for which it was eligible. So it, it's worth checking out, but in all honesty, the movie pales in comparison to reading the play itself. It's just, it's the, this meeting of two couples, uh, both of them have uh, sort of things that they're working through emotionally, it's sort of a uh, crazy situation, uh, there's lots of laughs, it's very hilarious, you know, there's moments of danger in it and craziness, just lo it's very humorous and sort of tragic at the same time. It's definitely one of the greatest plays of the 20th century and totally worth checking out. Um, many of you guys uh, seem to like the poem, uh, Story About the Body. Uh, so I thought I'd show you guys uh, this book. It's uh, The Apple Trees at Olema uh, by Robert Haas. This is the uh, new and selected poems of his. So it has lots and lots of new stuff. You can see it's a, you know, a pretty substantial book. But of course, since it's poems, you can just read through it a little tiny bit at a time and sort of uh, take it one bit at a time. Haas is sort of the uh, one of the greatest lyric poets uh, still alive today. Uh, you know, his poems tend to be like really crisp, you know, really sort of uh, devastating. And I can tell you that that uh, story about the body, that he has many other uh, poems that are, you know, potentially even better than that one. And also, uh, you might notice, uh, see that right there, six ninety nine half price books. I don't know whether you'd still be able to get it there, but that gives you an idea that you'd be able to get all that for uh, relatively cheap. Uh, next book I'd like to show you is uh, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean Dominique Baudy. Okay, so this book, uh, it, the cover won't look like this. This is an old edition, but this book is a memoir. Uh, in our class, uh, we didn't have. Uh, a memoir section, so there was no room for a book like this, but it's a, a true story of a man who was at the top of his life. He was the editor of the French Elle magazine. He was, uh, you know, 
good looking and wealthy and successful and all these sort of things. And then in his mid forties, he had a devastating stroke that left him completely and totally paralyzed. Uh, the only way he was able to communicate because he wasn't able to speak was by blinking an eye. Uh, and by blinking that eye, he was able to write this book, um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, it's a brief book, as you can probably understand. Uh, give him a little bit of credit for that. Uh, but uh, the chapters are, are really short. He would memorize what he was going to say over the course of hours and hours, and then uh, would have it transcribed out via eye blinks. Um, so it's a beautiful, amazing book of somebody who basically had everything taken away from him and struggles to deal with it, and then ultimately finds out that life is still worth living. Uh, the next book is uh, Ernest Hemingway, the short stories. Uh, pretty much you can't go wrong getting anything uh, from Hemingway. He, of course, is the author of Cat in the Rain, uh, which we read for this class. Uh, he is uh, an amazing writer. He's possibly like the quintessential uh, American writer of the 20th century. Very, very straightforward and curt in his language. Uh, not a lot of flashiness. You know, short sentences, very direct, but always with a strong sort of moral core underpinning it. Uh, this book is just the short stories. He also has several famous novels, but his short stories are uh, really fantastic. This has all of them in it. Many of them are very brief and completely and totally uh, worth the time. Uh, I just have two more books that I'd like to show you. Uh, one of them is The Collected fictions of Jorge Luis Borges. Uh, Borges, uh, of course, wrote The Gospel of Mark, which is a pretty complicated work. But one reason I show you Borges here is because he is a genius. Uh, there's really uh, no other way around it. If you're going to read anybody and be like, wow, that guy is just operating in a, an intellectual realm that is profound, uh, Borges is your guy. He's the type of person where you could go and you could read, uh, you know, just one Borges story and it could keep your mind going for about two weeks. Uh, so I highly, highly uh, recommend checking him out. Uh, another thing you might appreciate about uh, Borges, for example, is the fact that many of his stories uh, are very short. Uh, like right here, you can see this one. Okay, this right there, that is the whole story. Okay, so uh, he has a lot of stories that are very brief, where quite literally you can just sit down, take your time with it, uh, read the story, and then, you know, have your mind messed up for a while. Uh, so I highly recommend him. Uh, the last book I'd like to show you is also the, the newest book uh, in this stack of books I'm showing you, uh, but it's uh, a really uh, fantastic one. It's a very uh, brief novel. Uh, it's you know, 115 pages long or so. Uh, it is called Train Dreams by Dennis Johnson. Uh, Dennis Johnson wrote Car Crash While Hitchhiking. Uh, Train Dreams is a very new uh, novella of sorts uh, of his, and it's not at all uh, like Car Crash While Hitchhiking, but uh, it still has the same sort of like profundity and beauty to it. Uh, it takes place around the you know, beginning of the 20th century, uh, it takes place out in the West, you know, there's lots of railroad situations, stuff like that. It's basically about a man, uh, an ordinary man, trying to find his way in the world and, uh, you know, the types of things that he encounters. So it's a really fantastic book and another one that you can read in just a couple days, but it'll stick with you. So I hope out of these books that I've shown you, uh, that you found uh, one or maybe two or maybe all of them uh, that you would consider, you know, putting on a list of books to get. Uh, I do hope that, you know, you've learned a little bit more about literature in this course. You've uh, maybe learned to enjoy reading uh, a little bit more, see what's out there. Maybe you can uh, read things a little bit more deeply. And uh, all in all, I hope uh, it was good for you. Thanks.